So before going on, um, we should uh, say something about Newton's method in general. Uh, it doesn't actually always work. Uh, sometimes it doesn't even work at all. It just, just goes, goes haywire. Uh, but for most functions, it does work very well. Uh, the basic questions are, how do we pick a starting point? How many iterations should we use? How can we tell when the method is, is working and when it's not working? And what kinds of things can go wrong? Well, in the following examples, I'm going to show a few of the things that can go wrong. And then we'll say something when we're wrapping up about how you can answer all of these questions. Our next example is, uh, again, a cubic. It's x cubed minus 12x squared minus 16x minus 64. Its derivative is 3x squared minus 24x minus 16. And so the iteration formula is that x sub n plus 1 is x sub n minus, and this is the function evaluated at x sub n, divided by the derivative evaluated at x sub n. This is a cubic which has only one real root, and that real root is approximately at 13.53192093. Uh, and if you start your Newton's method close to 13, you will get, you will get a very nice convergence. But there's something else that happens with this particular polynomial. If you start your iterations at 0, watch what happens. You start at 0, so you go to the function at 0, and so that's going to be minus 64 is the value. You follow the derivative, the, the tangent line, over to the x-axis, and it hits the x-axis at minus 4. You evaluate the function at minus 4, follow the tangent back to the x-axis, you hit minus 2. Go to the function, follow the tangent line, and you're back to 0. So if you start with this polynomial at 0, you'll go 0, minus 4, minus 2, 0, minus 4, minus 2, 0. And you will just continue in that cycle of three numbers, and you will not get convergence to the root at all. This is uh, the sort of uh, very pathological behavior which you can achieve by carefully choosing your, your function and carefully choosing your starting point. I'll show you one other thing which uh, can happen. We're back to our original cubic. We're setting up our, our Newton's uh, quotient uh, iteration again. And I'm going to talk about the, the red root. And this is the same red root that we had before. If now I choose my starting point as x0 equals minus 1.1275, this is what happens. When if you start at minus 1.1275, your first iteration following the tangent line will take you to the x-axis very close to this local minimum. And now when you go to the function and follow the tangent line, it goes almost parallel to the x-axis, and the next point, x sub 2, is minus 4,872. Well, that's a long way from our root. And what happens is that as you now take the next iteration, you get minus 3,248. You get very slow convergence back towards this root. And after many steps, you do get convergence to that root, but it takes many, many iterations to, uh, to make that happen. So this is, again, uh, uh, I took a particular choice of a starting place, and I chose it so that the first iteration would be close to a local minimum, and that will give us very uh, unsatisfactory behavior for Newton's method. So the correct thing to do w would have been to choose my starting point much closer to this root. I can make an approximation from looking at the graph. 
and I want to make sure that I stay away from all the local maxima and minima where I'm going to get a wide divergence of the method. So there are uh, good choices and there are bad choices. So we've seen already how to set up Newton's method for a function and how to iterate it. Uh, you can do those calculations in a spreadsheet very easily. You can just set up your iteration and, and that allows you to change your start point and see all the values change all at once. Um, it's, very, uh, it's very easy to use a spreadsheet to do a, a Newton's method calculation. And so I, I encourage you to, uh, to do that and to try it with some functions. Um, and uh, let's just summarize by saying that Newton's method uh, is an iterative process for finding roots. It moves vertically to the curve, then follows the tangent back to the x-axis. You should use a graph of the function to understand where to start and how quickly the uh, sequence does converge. We have lots of good uh, computer graphing tools now that make this very straightforward to get a good picture of what's going on. Um, there is in fact a lot that can be proved about the convergence of Newton's method and related methods. There are conditions you can put on the function. You can prove things about the convergence rate. Um, there is a great deal that you can prove and I just haven't done any of that here Ivan to uh, encouraged you to use your common sense when you look at the the uh, the graphs of the functions and that will tell you what uh, what's going on. Um, this uh, particular method is a good door to the what's called numerical analysis which is the mathematical subject that studies the way that processes such as this behave and attempts to make uh, statements about convergence of, uh, of solutions. It's also one of the pathways into fractals. Fractals are very interesting uh, geometric shapes which uh, have something wrong with their dimension and makes them uh, quite beautiful to look at. And Newton's method is one of the ways that you can actually produce fractals um, if, you, uh, if you iterate uh, at the right kinds of points. And let me conclude by with the histor historical remark that although this is always called Newton's method, there were actually many people who worked on this uh, method. It's, uh, uh, there are other names that are associated, associated with it. And Newton, in fact, uh, showed how to use the method for one cubic polynomial. And uh, many others have contributed uh, to this uh, subject uh, since that time.